And welcome back. Today we are flying out one of my all-time favorites, the Key 84 Hey. And this is one of those nostalgia planes because it has been the second plane I've ever touched in my life. Considering I flew the hell out of this thing in idle 2 1946. It was called the Key 84 LC. And the reason it's lowercase is because the capitalized L will be dealt out by this thing pretty consistently. In all seriousness, this thing is actually pretty damn over tiered. It's the exact same plane as the Ki-84 Ko as well as the Ki-84 Otsu, other than the fact the guns are different. But the flight performance is identical, and trust me, you do not want to face jets in this thing. And even at your own BR, the F2G, the P-51H, and all those planes, they do have a performance advantage. So at the start of the match, it's best to not be on the back foot. But you do want to take some risk, because if you don't take risk in this thing, you are just going to get your ass whooped. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to dive below everyone and just turn fight everyone at once. Because even though it's a Japanese plane and it dogfights pretty damn well, it is not a zero. And you do have to be a little bit more conservative in that sense. But a plane like an SO8000 isn't much of an issue. Do keep in mind that the compression of this thing is pretty hefty. And it isn't that fast, making it very annoying to fight all the high speed planes around this bracket. And that's even counting the a lot of the props that you face. So we are going to start off with diving with the SO8000. Because I don't want him to dive on me as I'm engaging the full ball down below. And I notice he just dives out. So I'm just going to break off for now. I'm going to switch targets to the F8F. Keep my eyes on the SO8000 because he's clearly aware of me. And I'm kind of expecting him to pull back into me. So we're going to shoot this guy down as he is basically AFK. Probably dropped his controller on the floor or something. And we are just going to go straight back up. And see that the Spitfire as well as the F7F are coming in from the left hand side here. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a horizontal turn. Conserve my speed. Still stay quite decently above them. And we'll see if this Spitfire or the F7F wants to pitch up for us. SO8000 does what I expected him to do earlier. He comes for up for us. But again the SO8000 is really not that much of a threat. If we are talking about over tier planes. Other than the guns, that is also definitely one of them. Going on with the Spitfire, we managed to... Yeah, that's an assist. J5N just beat me to the case. And we are going to switch back to the SO8000. And the only reason I'm focusing this guy is... Because he is clearly paying attention. He's trying to get an opportunistic shot on me. Unfortunately for him, we get an opportunistic shot on him. From over a kilometer. These 30 mils are extremely potent. If they connect. The low rate of fire makes them kind of annoying to use with the wing mount. But as long as the conversion as well as the spread of the guns bless you, they're pretty damn deadly at longer ranges. And because we are not in the jet, the F7F does not eat it for breakfast and we simply gun him out of the air. Down he goes, up we go, get a little bit of altitude in and then we start engaging the full ball right behind us. And I'm gonna start cutting down some content here if I don't do anything. If I'm positioning myself, if I am flying around trying to look for someone i will show you if there's actually nothing going on like i'm just flying straight from a to b i'm gonna start cutting it out this way i can put a little bit more content in in these videos try to keep them a little bit shorter and faster paced without you actually losing out on anything there's a lot of dead room in these videos if i have something to talk about i'll keep it in but in this case i will not we go ahead on with an LF9. The LF9 is very dangerous in a dogfight in this thing. Luckily, we had a much higher entry speed. He has about a top speed of 570 kilometers an hour on the deck. He is climbing and we were going 600. Very safe to assume for us that we have a lot more speed coming into the MERS. So we just go horizontal. We wait for him to bleed all his speed. And then we simply just turn right into him. And we slap him with 30 mil. Down he goes. And a game later, we are getting engaged by an FU-4B. Now what I want to do here is get a little bit of my speed up. I don't want to go too fast and compress. I want to get him a little bit closer with my speed a little bit closer to him as well. And then we start turning in. We give him the shot. We start pulling up and over. And we are going to try to get a shot in here. But he is going to play it right. And he is going to fly away. He's going to start dodging. And he's not going to go up instantly. Even though he has much more speed than me. We could have just gone straight up. But we would have gunned him down. So he's waited to get a little bit of separation. And then he goes up. I break off to give him some room. He knows that I break off so he comes back in. I know that he comes back in so I go back into him. He notices that I go back into him after he went back into me. And we are back to square one. I'm just going to give him my six because I'm not going to have this cat and mouse. I look away, you look away for 20 minutes. I'm not feeling that one. So I'll just give him my six and we're going to start from square one. We are going to dive a little bit. We're going to try to pick up some speed. Make him compress his rudder. And we want to get him 
as close in front of us as possible. So I'm gonna try to get him very close. I'm gonna turn in front of his guns, which is pretty dangerous, but this guy is playing it right. So I'd rather get him right in front of me. So we pull in front of him. He could have tried to pull in here, but then he would have died. But because I set up correctly and he stuck too long, we get on his six, we click, and down he goes. Now, as you can tell by my ammo load here, I already sprayed half of my tourney meals at this eight, SO8000. He has been going uh, fast, trying to run away from me. And that's fair, it's 3v1. But now we are getting engaged by the F2G below us, so we're gonna go straight up. We see the LA9 coming in, but I want to kill this F2G as quickly as I can, so I'm going a little bit too aggressive, and I end up in a head -on. So I break off, I'm not having any of those 50 kills in my wing. So we go ahead on with the LA9. I'm gonna stick a little bit longer than I normally would. But I need to be aggressive here because it's 3v1. We get very lucky and we spark a 23 of our wingtip. And the SO8000 is now coming back in. SO8000 is not the main threat here. All I have to do is kind of just stay in front of him without flying straight. And he will never hit us. The LA9 is severely crippled. F2G is... He has oil leak, but I don't think he's damaged very badly. So, LA9 coming up with us. F2G is diving out, SO8000 is flying away, so right now we're going to focus the LA9, try to kill him as quickly as I can, because he's a very easy target, and I want to get him out of the game. Luckily, he bails out, and we can re-engage towards the SO8000, as well as the F2G. SO8000 is now going head-on with us, so is the F2G. F2G tries to go head-on, we get a crit in, SO8000 tries to come head-on, we don't get anything in, and we are just going to try and fly in front of him, and there is no chance in hell he's ever going to be hitting that. So we just go up here and we are just going to turn fight the SO8000 and you can guess how this is going to go because the SO8000 is absolutely appallingly bad when it comes to dogfighting and this thing is pretty damn decent so he's completely out of speed we're going to pull back over we're going to aim our guns at him he pops a smoke I'll gladly take the invitation down goes the SO8000 speaking about SO8000 down goes another one so we're going to go straight in here. There's some P-51s at medium altitude. As well as some guys on the deck here. And who do I want to engage? Now I can wait for the P-51s all the way in the back. But there's two guys right below me. And sometimes you'll just have to take the kills you can get. Without sacrificing too much. Because the number games is very important when you are not in a great plane. You can dogfight a lot of these vehicles. Especially the 190A8. But if they play it safe. You are going to be in a problem. So I'd rather get these guys out of the match. Keep my team alive. And then I don't have to deal with two planes. That I will struggle with when they are on the run. Try to get a long range shot in the fu 4 b He dodges us. So there's no use spraying more at this point. Then the P-51H behind us actually dives out. Neutralizing his threat. We shoot all around him there. Kind of unlucky. But we are catching him right now. Because we are able to cut him off. He has to fly defensively a little bit. And I cut my troll very preemptively here. Because I want this guy dead right now. I will compress too much if I commit too hard to him. And I don't want that. So we pull in. We are able to pull in because we don't compress that much. We one shot his wing. And down goes the Corsair. P-51H in the meantime is flying towards us. But he has two guys on his six. So he is not going to be the main threat here. And we are just going to get a little bit of altitude here. And see who we can engage. The P-51 breaks off. Or rather the two guys break off the P-51. And the P-51 has a little bit of room to fly around now. So we are going to recommit. Going to turn into a head-on. We're going to shoot at him. And we notice that it's a little bit off lead. So we recorrect terrain. We click again. And down goes the Mustang. And Mustangs and especially the F2Gs are very, very annoying in this thing. And the P-51 is a little bit different. It can actually somewhat turn with you. I'm not telling you that it will win the dogfight. But considering the speed, the climb rate and the turn that it has, it becomes very annoying to fight and he can disengage at almost any time. And they're very durable as well. And this sounds kind of weird, I know, because Mustangs are pretty fragile. But the P-51H is very good at just staying in the air and not actually dying. And if you crit it, even if you crit both wings and it's 2v1, it's still enough of a threat to be very, very annoying. That thing goes almost 600 kilometers an hour in a straight line with an orange engine. I want you to just... Let that sink in for a second. So F2G here is engaging the Junker 288. Which is perfect for us. Because this means that we can engage him without him paying too much attention to us. He is completely ignoring us. We hit him and we miss him. A little bit of a bad shot. But he's still completely occupied with shooting down the Junker. And then we just get on the 6. He is way too close. We shoot off his rudder. We shoot off something else. We hit him again. We hit him again. 
yeah, sometimes these guns are just... Uh, I, I hate them sometimes, I really do. But the F2G damage model is also a bit of a joke, so you, it could go... Uh, could have two minutes. He finally dies because he slams into the ground. And that is going to be kill number four. And there comes kill number five. Well, not yet, but he is right above his airfield and he's coming right towards us. So I'm going to lead him away from the base a little bit so we can actually try and fight this guy. So we are going to turn back in here. We are going to force, well, not really head on, head on, but we are going to go head on with him. And I'm just going to be dodging his 50 cal spray. I'm going 600, so we have a little bit of speed here. And again, I'm going to turn way too early. He's on R6 now, and this is on purpose. Because if he then tries to pull lead on us, he instantly sets himself up. For an absolute disaster. So he pulls back in. We set him on fire. And that's going to be game. And here we are in another match. Flying straight. There's an FCG in front. And one below us. And I'm just looking at the one below me. Because he's very close. And I'm expecting him to just pitch up for me. But he is shooting at someone else. And the guys in front of me I can't really deal with. So I'm just going to pitch down for this guy. It's going to make sure that my teammate doesn't have to kill this guy. It's going to save him time and energy. Making it so that he will probably be more likely to stay alive. And then I noticed that we have quite a few guys at altitude here. There's an F2G on the deck. And we are gonna do it a little bit differently yet again. And as you noticed, this is the third game. And I'm gonna fly it differently yet again. Because there's no real right way to fly this thing. You have very much have to adapt to the game. And you very much have to just kind of roll with the, the pedals you have. If that's an actual expression. So we dive on the F2G here, we're going to try to clean everyone up on the deck here, there's an 84 that's going to win on tickets, as well as two F2Gs somewhere around, I then hear a plane, I look around, no one there, so we're going to recommit to the F2G, we broke off initially because we didn't want to compress, but now he is losing a little bit of speed, we can still dive on him, so we should be able to just close the gap here and gun him down rather reliably, he's just rolling around, here comes my teammate that's going to go for the guy that. I'm shooting at and not the guy that's literally riding my ass. FCG right behind us. And he is gonna overshoot. He's a little bit too fast and he can't really turn with us anyway. So he does the right thing and he puts it into his very shallow climb. Try to snipe him. We shoot a little bit too low. And now we are in a little bit of the back foot here. This is not the position you want to be in. 84 behind us is not much of a threat on its own. But it has four AM trees. And there's also two F2Gs around that are kind of bleeding us of all our energy. First one breaks off, he's being engaged by a teammate. And then we have a second one on our left that's also being engaged. We have a little bit of breathing room here. But this is definitely not the position I want to be in. And this is what I mean with you don't want to be too aggressive at the start. Because if you find yourself in a position like this, where you are on the back foot, your disadvantage is only going to grow. You don't really have an, the means to get the energy back or to get your positioning back in this thing while your enemies very often do because at the end of the day you are a 5.3 plane 84 slams himself into the water fine by me saves me the ammo and the energy and here come the two f2g's again because they quote unquote reversed with the tal 152 h's he is leading him over me not very helpful but if this f2g dives on me it will leave the 152 completely open and able to shoot the guy off my six so i'm gonna go up a little bit bleed my speed turn into him in the hope that he goes for me he doesn't and then i'll notice the other f2g right above me seeing if he maybe wants to dive on me but he's very fixated on the guy right in front of him rightfully so he wants to secure that kill so we go ahead on with the f2g he breaks off to go head on with us last second we managed to get a 30 mil in but it doesn't actually kill him very unfortunate but at least he's damaged a little bit and i'm gonna keep going for the guy in front of me because i need to fly straight anyway to get some separation some speed with the guy behind me and 152h does it again he goes for the guy that's in front of me but this time can't really blame him because we are both engaged by someone on our six so we turn in here we go up and over this guy is damaged somewhat and he breaks off prematurely he flies away and look at the distance he gets in that amount of time and he's basically out of gun range that's of course a lie down he goes because these 30 mils go 900 meters a second if you overshoot someone expect them to turn in expect them to shoot from long range don't just fly straight otherwise you're gonna end up like simp over here so f2g is now engaged with the 152h but i expect the 152h to win that dogfight pretty reliably but it looks like he actually has him on a six so i'm gonna go head on with him here if he goes for me for the head on it's good because the 152 then is able to turn back into him 
otherwise I get the kill. I get the kill in this case, which is perfect for us. Here we go, head on with an F2G yet again. It's a little bit of a trend, this current video. I'm just going to try to dodge the 50 cals. He's already spraying at a lot of rounds. And I'm not really feeling down to 50 cal in my engine. So we are just going to end up putting this into a spiral. We go horizontal for a little bit. We drop the flaps. And we are simply just going to outturn him. Very little he can do with an energy disadvantage. Of course, he could have just run away. But if he tries to dogfight this, well, I have bad news for you. He does have a better climb rate. And he does have, like... A better energy management in the turn. The thing is. I just turn so much better. I stall so much later. That if you try to do those maneuvers. You're just going to get me within gun range. And I'm just going to be hosing you down. Very unfortunate that these guns are yet again. Doing absolutely nothing. But that's just how it is sometimes. We hit him again. That's another crit. It's only an aileron. But I'm so close. I have two turrets left. They connect. And he finally goes down. And here we have a Yak-3 VK-107. A plane I still have to fly out, I know. As well as an FU-4B. That both don't really want to engage me. And they have been flying this way for a while now. And they are finally coming in. And they are finally going to start engaging me. Now the Yak-3 VK-107 is very annoying to fight in this thing. Because it's faster than us. It climbs better than us. It climbs pretty similarly. And all in all, it is a very dangerous plane. So the FU here is then also running trains on us. So we are going to fly this very not optimally. And we're going to hope that the FU doesn't do too much. So first things first. We're going to try to go low. We're going to try to go underneath the Yak-3. And see if we can pull into him here. But the FU is flying with him in a way that I can't actually pull up after him. Because if I do so, I die. The Yak-3 then gets a shot because I have to break off. So we do the same thing again. We go low. And this time we're going to try and go below the FU. And the Yak-3 doesn't actually go back up. So he's right on the 6 now. I'm going to use some of these trees. And some of the altitude here. To go underneath him. And we're going to try to lead his turn. And we should be able to get a shot in here. But the FU. Is not actually coming at us. I lost him for a second. I could have very easily killed the Yak-3 there. But because I wasn't paying attention enough to the FU. I thought he was in a different position. And I end up actually losing the shot because of it. But we do the exact same thing. We lead his turn. And this time I'm actually just going to stick the fight. We get a very easy shot. Ugh. Just to pretend that I hit him there. You know uh, Jack. You know what you can pretend as. Like an... Uh, he can feel you win in the comments. What you can pretend as. But the Jack 3 then flies straight. We shoot at long range. We don't actually manage to connect. He's just going to run away for the rest of the match. And the FU 4B is then actually going to recall mid to us. And he is going to try and intercept us. Which is completely fine. He's going to try to eject us out of the match. The LA9 is bringing him right to us. But the FU 4B is going to engage us. So the LA9 and I are just going to swap targets. Which is completely fine. I'm just waiting for the FU to dive on me. Because he has been very hungry for me this entire game. So I'm expecting him to go for me any second now. But he doesn't. So I pull into him here. I'm going to cut off his flight path. He notices me. He's going to try to stall me out. Problem is I turn a little bit too well for you to do that. And he turns into pink mist. And that's all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all in the next one.